A fun thing happened last week. I got like five back-to-back -back messages, not on one platform. It was like Instagram, YouTube, whatever. And the question was pretty much the same. Josh, what are the emergency frequencies you recommend we monitor during an emergency? And that tells me a couple of things. One, preppers are learning, folks. So uh, they're, they're starting to realize that HF is a really important thing to add to their preparedness arsenal, or they're just, you know, emergency conscious people, and they live in an area within a disaster. The second thing is that th something must have happened. There was probably some YouTube video that got dropped or some interesting news factoid where people are like, hey, I should probably look into this. Or maybe, maybe they were already down the road of handhelds, and they kind of already figured this game out. And they're like, I should look into SDRs and shortwave transceivers receivers and receivers and maybe potentially get into ham radio HF. So there, there is a distinction here and, it, and it's an important one. So we've, we've talked about this a, a thousand times, the handheld, right? What do we put in here? We put in our national simplex frequencies, 146.520 probably also 146.580, the adventure frequency, get some repeaters loaded up on your handhelds, the whole nine yards, right? That's a pretty well traversed road. I think there's tons of content on that. As far as HF goes, though, we talk about it, but we're kind of always dancing around this fundamental difference between this and an HF radio. This radio doesn't have a prominent VFO knob, right? It, it, it does. It's got a little nub in here. Um, they all work a little bit different. Sometimes there are buttons on the face of the radio and whatnot, and it allows you to go up the frequencies in steps, right? We've talked about, you know, five kilohertz step, whatever. When you click it, it goes up five kilohertz or down, and you can kind of scout around. We've also talked about scanning. Hold the scan button, scan the bands, that kind of thing, right? Great. Well, in HF... Frequency agility, those two words are fundamentally what really makes using HF so much different from VHF, UHF, particularly handhelds like one I was just showing. With frequency agility, you'll notice on radios like even small QRP radios, the tuning knob is a primary tool. It's a primary function item. And the reason for that is because HF signals traverse and propagate in some cases, the entire planet, you have to have the ability to scan around as things change, where you start to hear people coming in of your propagation window and out of your propagation window. You're kind of always moving around. There isn't necessarily one frequency watering hole. Uh, don't worry, I'm going to get back to that. There is per se, but in an emergency, your best asset is your ability to navigate that frequency space and understand what particular frequencies you should be listening to. And I'll take a side note here. I'm not affiliated with Nifty Guides, but Nifty Guides has a band plan chart. It's this little spiral bound chart that covers all the amateur radio bands and it, it goes into some length of explaining frequency allocation so for instance if you were on 20 meters so we're talking 14 megahertz amateur radio band you have 14.250 megahertz and all the way up to 14.350 megahertz for voice right so single sideband voice if it were me in an emergency and it was daytime, I'd probably start on 20 meters and start scrolling around. Even more points if you have an HF radio that has a screen or you can connect it to a computer and you can see the waterfall, you can pinpoint, I'm going to go right over there. And that's kind of the trend that's been going with a lot of the HF radios is that you see the frequency and you're like, that's what I want to listen to. So the fundamental answer to the question is get comfortable in scanning the frequencies, get comfortable in using the radio, calling CQ. CQ, I'm seeking anyone to come back to me. I want to have a conversation with you. In an emergency, you may have to very well start up your own net, which what's a net? It's a frequency space where people are coming to exchange information, usually what we call traffic. And traffic is information, data, it could be about a disaster, it could be about a person, could be about your needs in a disaster, whatever it is, right? Now, I'm not going to get into antennas or if we want to do NVIS and shoot the RF up and come back down. Again, there's tons of video on that. We're going to focus primarily on the frequencies here. Now, depending on where you live, there are frequencies that are allocated for specific HF things. Let's stick with 20 meters for a second. 14.300 megahertz is the maritime mobile watch net. And what is that? Well, it's, it's a frequency that is agreed upon right a gentleman's agreement that when you go to that and if you have maritime traffic meaning 
around water that you could go to that to request help, to update people about extreme weather situations, maritime related stuff. And yeah, generally we do a good enough job staying off of that frequency unless there is an emergency situation. So much so that people that are like avid followers of the maritime mobile watch net will uh, tell people to get off the frequency if they're not actually passing maritime traffic. And they do run a proper net, which I've checked into as I am in Southern California. And sometimes we do have weather that I could report upon or I've been traveling and I've actually used that net to see if my station's getting out to see if I can make a contact and check in. And they're more than willing to do that so long as we're staying within their prescribed ways of doing their traffic. Another net that will randomly get kicked off is the Hurricane Watch Net. And they have 20 meters and 40 meter frequency spaces that they set up when there is a large enough disaster causing hurricane. We are rolling into Florida hurricane season right now, and so this is a time where you will see activity on those frequencies and just be cognizant if you're hearing kind of weird conversations going on, which you don't expect, that's likely due to people that are having a localized emergency and a disaster. And in some cases, oddly enough, listening to it, you might be able to render aid in the form of getting traffic out because people in Florida might be wanting to let their family members know that they are okay or they're being displaced going to another location and traditional communication will not work. Say cell phones, they can't even send a text message. That's happened for those small impacted areas. Everybody out's okay and you might be in the same city as an individual that they might want to reach out to and let them know that they're okay. Statistically, how likely is that to happen? Pretty rare, but it has happened. So before closing this out, I'll leave you with this last bit. And then of course, you can always set up a frequency plan with your friends and family that can communicate over HF. Let's say you are further away than 300 miles from your family and friends that you wanna communicate with. Well, you'd likely need HF amateur radio to be able to do that if you wanted to stay within amateur radio. Of course, get yourself a satellite phone, uh, one of those Garmin in beacons. All these are good layered approaches to emergency communication if you need to depend on it. But amateur radio can do that too. And HF is going to be the thing you would rely upon if you start breaking that 300 mile-ish range. And even within 300 miles, it starts getting really difficult with a low-powered handheld ham radio. You're going to have to step this up considerably to a much larger unit. But you can make these plans now. So when someone asks me, Josh, what frequencies do you monitor during an emergency? The answer I always tell them is I scan them all. I'm monitoring. I'm actively using that big knob on your radio called the VFO, variable frequency oscillator, to go in there and tune my radio, manually get in there. We don't scan very often in HF. We actually get in there with our finger and spin it around, sometimes fast, sometimes slow. Think of uh, Jody Foster in contact at the beginning. That's what we do. It's both what we do when we're having fun with radio, but then also in an emergency situation, that's how we would handle it. So expect that one planning needs to get done, right? Friends and family all got to get on the same board, right? There's the first thing. There's a number of people that are doing good work in the area of making kind of a broad comms plan. I'm thinking of the tech prepper. I'm thinking of S2 underground. I like what they're doing. It's kind of a first step to get into it and a way to get people interested in HF. But at the end of the day, you, the HF operator, are the ones that are going to have to start scanning and utilizing your radio. And I want you to both be be able to scan around looking for people to receive and listen to but you need to start transmitting too so you can build that muscle memory of how to operate the radio correctly not just hold the button down and talk i don't mean that but how you actually communicate information effectively and with brevity to get your information across or to transfer information okay hopefully that answers the question i'm josh ki6naz thanks so much for watching sound off in the comments below with your thoughts on what are the best frequencies to monitor during an emergency on specifically HF Amateur Radio. Thanks so much for watching. 73.